everybody, welcome back to another exciting chemistry video lesson. Uh, today's video lesson is going to focus on enthalpy and thermochemical equations. Now the concept of enthalpy is a pretty abstract idea that we're not really going to get into too much, um, you know, too deeply. Uh, we're going to focus just on the surface level of it, just enough information so that we can kind of use it at this level, okay? Uh, so enth enthalpy is a property of our system that we're dealing with. So we talked about our systems and we talked specifically about heat being transferred from a system or into a system. So if a system loses heat, if heat is released from that system, then what happens is we say that that's an exothermic process, right? Heat is released from our system. Um, and as a result of that, what happens to our system? That's kind of what we're talking about now. That's what enthalpy is. Enthalpy is a property of the system that changes when the heat is released. As I said, it's a pretty abstract idea, so don't get too worried about understanding it fully. But it's something about our system that's changing as the heat is released. And as heat is entering into our system, our enthalpy is going to increase as we add heat to the system. And we say that this is an endothermic process. So that's what we're going to be focused on. It. So uh, when heat is transferred between the system and the surroundings, the system is going to experience what's called a change in enthalpy. The enthalpy is going to change. And this is going to be just like we saw before, uh, enthalpy final minus enthalpy initial. But we're really never going to calculate that. We're going to focus solely on the change that happens when the heat is transferred. So um, when we see that the reaction is exothermic, we're going to see there's a decrease in our enthalpy. So therefore, we're going to have a negative change. And then we'll have a positive change in our enthalpy when heat is added. So let's take a closer look at this. So if we have the uh, diagrams down here, um, we can see that we have enthalpy changing. So enthalpy is increasing as we go up. Over here, we've got the green and the, the red lines. These are the reactants and the products. And I can tell these are the reactants because the arrow is pointing down toward the product. So it's going to start as methane and oxygen and produce CO2 and water. Now, you should know that this is a combustion reaction, and combustion reactions produce heat. So heat is released. So over here is our Q, and we would say that this is an exothermic reaction because heat is being released. Since it's exothermic, we're going to see a decrease in our enthalpy as a result of that. So our system, as a net result, is going to have less enthalpy in it than it did before. Now, enthalpy comes from the word enthalpian, which means to warm. Again, don't worry too much about that, but that's just the origins of the name. Um, we're going to focus solely on these changes that are occurring as these processes happen. On this side here, we can see that we have water in the solid form actually going up into the liquid. So this is the opposite. This is a process that's going to be endothermic, where the heat is being added to the system, and therefore the enthalpy change is going to be an increase. So as we saw, there's a connection between heat and these changes in enthalpy, but they're not quite exactly the same thing. And that's kind of what we're going to focus on in the next little bit that I'm going to talk about. Um, so what you could think of too is enthalpy, I'm sorry, you could think of enthalpy as like the content of the heat, like how much heat the system can store or hold. That's Again, not 100% true, but it's going to work for what we're doing here. So if it's an endothermic process, heat content of the system increases. Therefore, we're storing more heat in our system. If it's an exothermic process, heat is being released out of the system. So therefore, it's going to decrease um, the heat content of the system. We're going to have less heat as a result of that. OK, so how do we use this? Let's take a look. OK, so we're going to use these uh, changes in enthalpy in what are called thermochemical equations. Uh, because chemistry deals with chem reactions all the time, we're going to tie changes in enthalpy into uh, the balanced equation. So what this is telling us is that if I take nitrogen and hydrogen and I react it to form ammonia, what's going to happen is there's going to be a change in enthalpy of the system when this process happens, when this system changes from reactants to products, kind of like what we saw in that last slide. OK, so in this case, we have a negative value here, which tells us that this process is exothermic. So instead of having the heat put in as a reactant or a product, we put it off to the side using what's called the change in enthalpy. And this is telling us that our system is losing heat. And therefore, the change in enthalpy is going to go down. So this would be considered an exothermic reaction because of the fact that we have a negative value for our change in enthalpy. So what this tells me is that for every one mole of nitrogen that reacts, I can produce this amount of heat. If three moles of hydrogen react, we get this amount of heat. So this is this this 91.8 kilojoules of energy is every time three moles of hydrogen reacts with one mole of nitrogen. This might sound familiar, might sound an awful lot like some stoichiometry that we talked about before. 
And if you're thinking that, you're absolutely right. So when I make the uh, ammonia, when the ammonia is produced from the nitrogen and hydrogen reacting, not only do I make ammonia gas, but I also am going to be producing heat as well. Heat can also be generated in this reaction. And just like the amount of products that I made, it's going to be connected to the amount of reactants. We're going to do some calculations in the next video lesson, um, and I'll show you how to you know, use all of this stuff, just like we did with the stoichiometry before, uh, to figure out how much heat is being transferred. Now, where students get a little confused with these, um, now for, of course, you got to pay attention to the balance equation. I probably should mention that. So those coefficients are important. So this is the energy for every three moles of hydrogen, for every two moles of ammonia, or for every single mole of nitrogen that reacts. Okay. Um, so when we want to looking at changes in enthalpy, students get a little confused with the difference between heat and change in enthalpy. They're not completely the same thing because what we do is that heat that's coming out of the system is going to be dependent on how many moles react. Because obviously if I have two moles of the nitrogen, then I'm going to get double this energy. If I have three moles of nitrogen, then I get three moles. You know, I get three times the amount of energy to come out. So it's referred to as a, it's a property based on how much we have. Okay, which is an extensive property, but anyway. So it's going to be based on how much mass or how many moles react in the reaction. I'm going to get more and more heat. Enthalpy is going to be based on the energy per mole. So it's kind of like you can think of this as, as a molar mass. Just like we had molar masses, which were telling us how many grams per mole, but then yet mass could be any number we wanted. Right? If we have carbon, it would be 12.01 grams per mole. So this is the molar mass of carbon because it tells us how many grams for every one mole. You could think of this as the enthalpy, right? This is your enthalpy. Every uh, 19, or I'm sorry, 19, 91.8 kilojoules of energy for every one mole of nitrogen that reacts. And what I can do is I can figure out the mass. So if I had 24 grams of carbon, then I know that I had to have two moles. Well, if I have 182.6, you know, kilojoules of heat being released, now this would be my Q, right? This is the heat that's released from the reaction. That would tell me that I had to have two moles of nitrogen react. And that's how I'm going to connect this together. This sloppy writing is our change in enthalpy, and it's going to help us convert between energy, Q, heat, and the number of moles re that react. Okay, and I'll show you more of this in the calculation section in the next video. All right, so that is a thermochemical equation that ties in change in enthalpy, which is how the system changes when heat's transferred into and out of the system. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.